Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode Woo! of Yolitics. Oh, my what? gosh, man. That's loud. Oh, was I too loud there? Yeah, take it easy, man. Take well, you it know easy. how I do. Uh, we always do mic checks before these, and then immediately when I start talking, I lean way into the microphone. Yeah, back off here. You you can turn your turn your radio back up a little I, bit. I, I got excited for just a minute there uh, because, you know, I know what this is about. It's about property taxes. And by now, you've probably gotten, um, if you're a homeowner, you've probably gotten your property tax bill. Uh, and have seen perhaps a substantial difference, a reduction in your school taxes. So I, I know people downloaded this episode and want to immediately listen to you do math, but let's talk about uh, the more important <laughs> things here. Before we get going, you know, there's been a long running thing on this podcast where we talk about Wheeler getting the fruity beers all the time. Since our last episode, I did have the pleasure of speaking to Mrs. Wheeler. Yeah. And I got some intel. And Jason's been telling the truth. He doesn't know where these fruity beers come from in the back of the fridge. And, and he pulls these, uh, you know, raspberry beers out and pecan pie beers and all these things that, <laughs> that Mrs. Wheeler actually purchases and thinks that you should try. So it's it's funny that you mentioned the pecan pie beer because I was just looking in my refrigerator and there is another one in there like that. What it's weird. is it? Pecan pie? What, what is it? It's like it's, a, it's I think it's called Tejano Pecano, which I assume is something similar to that. Um, you know, usually I do try to keep you and Mrs. Wheeler separated just because I don't want people comparing stories. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I am glad in this case that she has confirmed that, you know, sometimes she's the little elf who kind of puts these things in there. I don't think she'd like me calling her a little elf, but you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Can we cut that out, Daryl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wheeler will be on the couch this weekend. Uh, so, so which, uh, I'm not beer? having a, I'm not having a fruity beer today because I'm trying really? to, I, you know, I, I do my best to try to keep with the theme and, you know, I was looking and nothing really fit this, but, uh, I picked the, this is from the, uh, Martin house brewing company in Fort Worth. And it's called the box slider because I figured, you know, backsliding, we're kind of backsliding in, in taxes, some of us, uh, and some of us uh, in huge ways. And so that's what I picked. Nice. What do you have? Well, I, 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 too, keeping with the theme, I, I selected fallout. Fallout. I love fallout. that. Oh, yeah. look at that. You can never go wrong with you that. The minute. Look at I that. I think Mrs. Wheeler shook this one. <laughs> and I hope you're not over the computer there as, as, you, not. as you drip this. I am over my notes, the though. That's not good. This is Hefeweizen from Manhattan Project Beer oh. Company, and it's. Uh, you, do you want me to take over this podcast? There's all foam there in that first. Oh, there it goes on the floor. Oh, can well, we get you a napkin? No, can you a this napkin is fine. There? It's all part of the process. Um, all right, so so let's let's back our listeners up here. Uh, what three or four months ago? Maybe not that yeah. long ago. No, it's been we, about that long. Uh, we, we get an email from a woman named Pat Hill, and uh, she says that she's uh, retired teacher lives in collin county north of dallas and she's concerned that her taxes have gone to zero her property taxes for the school district have gone to zero she's those concerned. are the biggest ones we pay she's and concerned, she's concerned. <laughs> normally i would delete it and just move on down the road it's like why are you concerned mrs yeah. hill come on forget about it who cares but she's concerned and i said you know what if you're concerned about it here's wheeler's email so i forwarded it on to jason and jason has been talking to her that's what Whiteley does. When he gets emails that are praising, he opens those and by all means responds. If there's something that's concern or work or a criticism, he forwards those to me somehow. Uh, but yeah, I did contact her. And and on the back side, after we hear from her here in just a minute, I, I'm going to go over you know a couple of numbers. And it's not just Pat Hill. I mean, we're talking about a lot of people out there, a lot whose property taxes for the school district have gone all the way to zero. And, yeah. and, and it's a lot. And we're going to give you a little snapshot of that on the other side of this. But we want to get to her first because she has, a, I think, a unique position in this. Her school taxes have fallen to zero dollars now. Um, and she likes that, yes. But on the other hand, she's really worried about, is this really going to stay like this? Is this real? Is this long term? Is this sustainable? And what is this possibly going to mean for schools? And, and, and like you talked about the backside of this, we also reached out to the the author of this, uh, State Senator Paul Betancourt, Republican from Houston, and said, you know, yeah, we had a lot of extra money in Texas this year because of the surplus. It was thirty two and a half billion dollars. He said it actually turned out to be almost thirty six billion dollars in the end. And we said, is this sustainable? Can, can you do without Mrs. Hill's? 
uh, school taxes and all of her friends' school taxes who are over 65. And then we called a school district, a local school district, and, and wanted to know from them, what, what do you think we're going to see when they stop paying taxes? Mm -hmm. So we, we've really tracked this thing down, all starting from an email. Um, and, and you know, we're, we were kind of teasing before we started here, but it seems like lawmakers messed with the wrong math teacher here. <laughs> Pat Hill, retired from Collin County. Pat, it is uh, so great to finally see you. I I have gone back and forth uh, on the phone with you and online with you for seems like a couple of months now. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> I feel like we're old friends at this point. Uh, I also feel like I, I might not have done well in your classes because we've been doing math back and forth is what we've been doing. Uh, first of all, I guess, congratul I, I don't know, what's the right wording? Is it congratulations that your property taxes for the school district have gone down to zero now? Or do you, I, I, I've gathered from you that you're kind of torn on this, even though it seems like a big gift. I'm a little apprehensive. <laughs> I, I'm i not sure how long it's going to be that way. Hmm. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little hesitant. You know, I, I know that right now they say it's zero. I'm not sure it's calculated right. I'll be very honest with you. I know people that are over 65, like I am, that theirs are not zero. Okay. Some of those are because their homes are worth a little bit more than mine, which I know that's the case. Um, I have neighbors whose homes are comparable to mine that theirs did not go to zero. Uh, I know people that whose homes are less than mine, that they did go to zero. Um, I have no idea how they calculated it because nobody seems to know. I've been on the phone two or three days this week trying to find out. So Pat, tell me how all this started. Did you get your, your uh, annual tax bill and it said zero on there? And secondly, I, I, I mean, I probably should, but I, I don't really do the math on these things. I, I take the, the county for, <laughs> for what they say. Well, it all started when the legislature was going on about, you know, how they were going to raise the exemption to $110,000 for the over 65. And my taxes have been frozen since 2013. And so a friend of mine and I were talking and we were, you know, usually when the, what that means is that they go back and they, they freeze them at whatever amount it was in 2013. Now, mine in 2013, I'll, I'll just give you the numbers because I don't care. It, they were about 14, my school taxes were about $1,400. And as Jason and I discussed, they went down in 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we couldn't figure out why they went down. Well, I later figured it out. Okay, you know me, the math person, I had to figure out why they went down. And what it was is they had increased the exemption $10,000 and they took off the tax for $10,000. And I think it was 16 is when it was. And so they dropped down to roughly 12.45, okay? So I've been paying school taxes at 12.45 for all these years. Well, they tell you they freeze the ceiling of the which is the dollar amount of your taxes. They don't freeze your appraisal, they freeze the dollar amount. Yeah, like real quickly there, for people who aren't over 65 or disabled, that's when you have a ceiling on your property taxes, your school property taxes. And what that means is that amount that you pay the year that you establish that ceiling, usually when you turn 65 or become disabled, that's the amount that they charge you for your school taxes every single year after yes. that, no yes. matter what happens with the value of your home. Sorry, I didn't right. want to interrupt, but some people are like, ceiling, what? I, yeah. I want a ceiling, you know, go and ahead. And they do that on the county tax and the college tax and the school tax, mm -hmm. not on the city tax. Right. Okay. So what they do is they go every year and they say, well, here's your assessed value. Here's your exemption. They subtract it off. Here's your tax rate. They calculate what your taxes would be. Then they say, oh, well, that's above the ceiling, but your ceiling is frozen. So... In, in 2013, here was your ceiling, so this is your tax. Regardless of what it was calculated to be, if that amount goes over, here's your tax. So a friend and I were talking, and I said, well, I don't think it's going to make any difference to our taxes because even with a $110,000 exemption, because our houses have gone up so much in value, it's still not going to make a difference because I mean, my house in 2013 was a little right at $110,000, and now it's $266,000.
So I'm saying, you know, take my exemption off, multiply it by my tax rate, multi, you know, and I'm still getting like $1,700 for the taxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, that's over my ceiling. So my ceiling's going to be the same. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I've worked with the legislator a lot with retirement issues. I don't believe anything till I see it in writing. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe anything they tell me. Okay. In the press. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And so we're, we're the podcast, not the press I, <laughs> today. Anyway, and so I just, you know, we're just sitting there saying, I don't think this is going to make a difference in our taxes. I just don't. And, and so, you know, they keep saying, Oh, you're going to, you're going to save $3,000 over two years and all this stuff. And we're going, how is that going to happen? You know? And, and sure so, enough, here it know, is. And, yeah. And, and so we're just, and, and then they, they gave us this, somebody sent us a card that said, go online to texas.gov slash property tax and look up your property taxes. So we go on there. Well, they're not on there. And hmm. so then Jason and I were talking and I went back online. Well, then they were there and it said it was zero. Hmm. And, and that going, was this year. That was the summer when you reached yeah, out to in us, the right? Summer. Yeah. 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 And, and we're going, well, where did they get zero? Hadn't found out yet. Well, see, Pat, I wouldn't I wouldn't question these things. If my taxes went down in 2013, I wouldn't have said a word. If they were at zero this year, I sure wouldn't have said a word, much less call Wheeler and, and want to do a podcast with him. That's I'd the last thing you'd do radar. is call me. Yeah. Well, I, now here's quiet. our concern. You have to understand our background. We were both school teachers, okay? You and your friend. Yeah, me and my friend, both school teachers. And we're sitting there. Hers is going eight, down 1,800. Mine's going down 1,200. And we're saying, my gosh, the school districts are going to lose $3,000 alone. And we're sitting here thinking, okay, Allen, how many people are in the Allen? How many people, my God, they're going to lose 5 or $6 million a year. And we're thinking, oh, my God, this is going to bankrupt the school districts. Now, that was our first thought. And then we're realizing, and I'm saying, now, wait a minute, we had to vote on this. So this means... They had to get the surplus funds approved to give to the school district. So that's because that's right. why we had to vote on it. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen in two years? So there's our there's my big concern right there. Mm -hmm. Is is that zero going to be my new ceiling? It or is. is it going to revert back in two years? And if it doesn't, if it stays at zero. Is the state going to continue to give that money to the school districts? And if not, what are they doing? Just defunding public education? Because I believe that's their ultimate goal. Now, that's that's my personal opinion. So that's and your big concern here. And that's why I that asked you. That is my you, big concern. That yeah, is that's my biggest concern. That's why I asked you in the beginning. So you feel torn about this because, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, great. You're on a fixed income. It's wonderful to get a tax bill from the school district that says you owe zero dollars. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, uh, property tax envy uh, of you uh, right now because of that, probably. But at the same time, you know, you dedicated your life to public education and you're worried mm -hmm. about, okay, it, it, you know, you say you're going to do this and that's, you know, it's all set up to do this right now where the state makes up for what you're not paying, mm -hmm. but how long will that stay there forever? Will it, will it maintain yeah. that? And you and, don't and, think that they will. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I don't know. And, and the other thing is, okay, are they going to tell us they're going to raise our ceiling back up? Or are they just going to send us a bill at the end of two years and say, Oh, by the way, you no longer owe a thousand dollars. You now owe $2,400 again. So besides coming to to us for for answers of which we have few, um, have you reached have you reached out to any lawmakers uh, who represent you up there? And and if so, have, have they been able to give you any? I have never resolutions? had much luck with any lawmakers up here. <laughs> Every time I have ever spoken to any lawmaker for any issue, they have always started out, and I can almost quote you their speech from the beginning. Let's hear it. Go. Oh, we have such respect for educators. Oh, I remember my favorite teacher. Oh, my children are teachers. Oh, my dad was a teacher. And mm. it's the same speech every time we hear them. Mm. And I, it just sort of goes in one ear out the other. Are, are there a number of other people like you who will no longer have to pay property taxes? Oh, yeah. Pat, you've been on uh, next door, haven't you? All my friends are over 65. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, we're, we have a large retired teacher group. We have 300 members in just our chapter. And, you know, uh, almost all of them are over 65. And, and ha have they and said we were, we were playing bridge last night and almost, you know, there were eight of us there and everybody was talking about, well, mine went to zero. Well, mine went to $80 and mine went to, you know, $100. And, you know, and so, you know, a lot of us, because we have, lived here for years and years and we've owned our home and they're paid for and so you know we're all sort of in the same boat mm -hmm. you know from the standpoint of financially where we are mm -hmm. you know plus you've and been so, on of course i'm on the legislative committee with T or our trta affiliate and i said when you've worked with it inside and out for 20 years you know what the issues are and how they fund and how they say mm -hmm. one thing but they do something else and yeah. i think I think a lot of our doubt comes from that. You and, know, and TRTA is the, the Texas Retired Teachers Association? Yes. Uh -huh. Have you, I'm sure you have a lot of friends still in the school district. Have you heard from your local school district whether they're concerned about this? Uh, no, I tried to get an appointment with our CFO of our school district, but I never could make touch base with him. And I thought about calling him and asking him if he knew anything, hmm. you know, and I'm sure they're concerned. Because my understanding is that Alan last year was working on a $5 million deficit at one time. And, I mean, they've had two bond issues fail in the last two years. They didn't ask for one this year. <laughs> mm. They had they had uh, four propositions on the ballot a couple of years ago. Two passed and two did not. They put them up for election the following year and they did not pass again. Mm. And, you know... Uh, money's tight and property high property's high and taxes are high and you know I, it's just all part of the you know the situation everybody's in you know uh, and pat you keep on calling around you're calling the school district you're calling the you know tax assessor collector and the you know, appraisal district and you know down to austin um why are you still calling what some people would well, say my, you know you're my, looking at my, gift my horse question in the mouth. is real simple i said Tell me again how you figured my taxes. That's the only question I want. Mm. I said, I would like a formula. I know there is a formula out there to give that you use to calculate my taxes. And I said, that's all I'm asking for is give me a formula. And one lady at, at the, um, the assessor's office in, in McKinney said, uh, well, I don't know why you're so concerned about this. Mm. And I said, well, I'd just like to know how you calculated my taxes. Hmm. And she, I said, I think I have a right to know how you calculated my taxes. I said, I, don't, I can tell you that I know how to calculate my city and my college and my county taxes because I figured those numbers out. Hmm. And I had to search before I could figure out how they did the exemption. But I figured those out. But there is no way I can figure out how you calculated my my school taxes. Yeah. And I said, I just want a, a, a formula. If you give me the formula, I guarantee you I can understand it. Pat, it's, it's funny that you say that because I, you know, when we were working together on this, I started calling around to Austin, even, you know, into the Capitol, even to the office of the lawmaker who wrote this legislation. And I was different people I would talk to. I would get totally different answers about how this was going to work. And I mean, they had to, you know, this thing had to percolate to the highest levels of state government for them to go. Yeah, here's here's what we've done. It's this and this and this. Uh, and and I mean, we went round and round for the longest time. And, you know, I was talking to appraisal districts here. They weren't clear on how this was going. Now, that was in the early going after this. But still, you know, they were trying to put these numbers together and the numbers didn't make sense to anybody. So you're right to to be asking the questions. Plus, on top of that, you've taught for how long? How long did you teach? 32 full time, 42 in all. 32 years full time, 42 in all. What did you teach? High school math, AP calculus, 25 years. Oof, that, I never got into calculus. Uh, <laughs> And Clear, clearly, Wheeler, you didn't get into calculus. <laughs> I feel like I've been through calculus in these past couple of months with Pat. Uh, Pat, can I share a little bit of the statement that you sent me the other day about? Sure, go ahead. 
you you got your taxes and and it said zero dollars and you you know most people would go look i got a zero dollar tax bill you said this statement is the most convoluted thing i've ever seen none of the figures add up none of the exemptions are reliable uh and and you said you know i've asked them to explain this to me they said they would call they did not my guess is that no one can explain the math the math doesn't work they would have failed my math class. So all this time later, you still haven't been able to reverse engineer this. Uh, I think the best explanation I've gotten as the closest I've come to a formula on this has been from John Ames, the tax assessor collector in Dallas County. They sent me this sheet of explanation of how this is figured. I forwarded that to you. I think I that's think the closest we've come. Oh, I haven't? Oh, I'll no, forward it over it to you. No. I might finally help you solve this equation, but it is very convoluted. I mean, it's paragraphs. Well, I, I was sent something by the comptroller's office. It was like basically the law, the, the joint resolution, you know, and it was the way I read it, it was more like how the how they calculated the tax rates. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I don't care how they got the tax rate, you know, and, you know, it was just, and I thought, and he says, oh, I hope this helps. And it was like 20 pages long. <laughs> and I said, well, it didn't. <laughs> I emailed him back and said, well, it didn't. And, and I said, you know, I have a BS in mathematics and a, and a minor in accounting. I can assure you, if you would just give me a formula, I could figure it out. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't get an answer back. <laughs> Pat, here, here's my last question on this. What grade would you give lawmakers for this tax bill? And secondly, what, what's the what's the feedback you would write at the top of the test there? <laughs> I would give him them an F. And, you know, I guess it doesn't surprise me in a way. They They never make anything easy. You know what I mean? And they never, I think the thing that blew my mind is I went, when I went on the comptroller's website, they had all this beautiful mission statement and they talked about transparency in government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in my last statement to the comptroller's CPA, I said, so much for transparency in government. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, this is not transparency in government. If it was transparency, somebody would tell me how they calculated my bill. And, and again, pe for people who listen to this, they're going to say, Miss Hill, just be quiet and walk on with that zero tax bill. Why, say, like the clerk told you, why do you care? Yeah, the lady at the assessor's office says, why do you care? You got zero. I said, yeah. how do I know it's right? How do I know they're not going to send me another bill in a few months and say, oh, by the way, we made a mistake. You owe $1,000. How do I How do I know that? I, I don't because the lady down the street from me is over 65 and she's got... She owes money on her taxes for the school hmm. and hers have been frozen for eight years. I think there's an underlying purpose in all of this. And I'm sorry, but I don't trust Lieutenant Dan and his crew. And I think you do know who I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. I think, I think the underlining purpose in all of this is to defund public education, just like the voucher system is that way. And everything else that he does is that way, because I know where his money's coming from, and you know where his money's coming from. And their purpose is to defund education in the state of Texas. And it's ridiculous that the money Texas has has the least funded public education system of most of the states. It's ridiculous the amount of money they do not put into education. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Pat, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and, and doing some of the math with us. Uh, again, you've made me smarter math wise uh, in these past couple of months. I'm, I'm going to send you those formulas over. We're going to get to the bottom of this eventually. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Pat. Nice being with y'all. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, that's uh, she's a character, first of all, uh, but she really does know her math, uh, and she still hasn't gotten to the bottom of this. Uh, I do have a couple of figures. It's a weird thing because you know you reach out to these different tax assessor collectors, and you go, "Hey, 
uh, how common is this? And, oh, you know, we're still crunching the numbers, whatever. In their defense, they've, you know, they're kind of in their busy season and they've had a lot of changes to institute here. And so uh, Dallas County, though, John Ames, the tax, tax assessor collector there, uh, has given me the best snapshot of what's going on here of anybody do i need uh, a calculator and pen and paper for this you don't either? that's how that's how nice they are they made it easy for us Go. so they said that in 2022 okay they had uh of all of the people uh, who have zero dollars owed in school taxes they said in 2022 uh there was 25 percent of people who had ceilings who qualified for zero dollars in school taxes mm. 25 percent of those people who were under a ceiling like pat hill there didn't have to pay anything in school taxes in 2023. Now with these changes that has gone up to 60% of the people who have ceilings owing $0 in school taxes uh, in raw numbers, it's gone from 23,000 back in uh, 2022 to more than 55,000 this year, all of those people paying nothing in school taxes. And again, nothing is their new ceiling so they pay nothing going forward next year the year after that the year after that and so on unless they make some big changes to their homes so these how are much, how much money is that though any idea i don't have no i don't have that? the umbrella figure as to how much money that is but it's more than but doubled you can imagine i mean if all of these people were paying a thousand two thousand dollars a year in school taxes or more yeah. uh, you know that starts to add up fast and again that is just one snapshot of one county here in texas and that doesn't even account for all of the people who went down to near zero that was just an easy search to run because we were putting in a zero dollar figure there's some people who owe five dollars twenty dollars eighty dollars a hundred dollars wow. way down from what they used to owe so now you're starting to see how much money is coming off of the ledger that used to go to all of these school districts now again the state though has said the school districts are not going to miss out on that money. We are going to make up for whatever's not being paid. And that, that's the question. If, if she's not paying for it, and if all her friends aren't, in Dallas County alone of the 254 counties, if the number is more than double for the people who don't pay, can the state sustain this? Of course they can this year. They have a lot of extra money because things are going great in the oil patch. Uh, but what happens in those leaner years? And that's a question we had for the author of this bill, State Senator Paul Betancourt, he's a Republican from Houston. And, and the question was simple. Can Texas sustain this in the future? We've looked at sustainability as well as the impact on taxpayers, and we can do both. So it's a record $18 billion package uh, that really has been years in the making. And it's having a fantastic impact on people's property tax bills. Uh, and so don't worry, the money is there. Also, we haven't even touched the rainy day fund, which is now overflowing with oil and gas severance monies. So we didn't do this in a vacuum. We took a real look at what the sustainability would be. And there's simply no problems on the near term horizon of four years or two more biennia plus this biennia that we're actually making the changes in because that's why it's on your tax bill right now. So that's Senator Paul Betancourt, his office, by the way, who was you know, pretty helpful with me in trying to figure out you know, what's going on here with these new calculations. Again, though, he's explaining it. He's saying, of course, you know, we've got plenty of money and we're going to keep doing this. And I think a lot of people, though, worry about those leaner years, uh, you know, when when Texas and this has happened in the past, doesn't have a budget surplus. In fact, uh, you know, is is running into the negatives and has to figure out, you know, where do we cut? So I think that there's a big concern there. And as we heard from Pat Hill to start things off, she believes that there's something more to this that, you know, that there's an effort uh, underway to, you know, sort of defund public schools, to undermine public schools. And she thinks that this is a pillar of that long term. We'll see. Yeah. And are Texas school districts nervous because of this? Do they think that Miss Hill's right about that? So we've everything that we've heard from school districts uh, privately They'll say, yeah, we're, we're really nervous because the state has money now, but we don't know if they'll have it in the future. And if they don't have it in the future, what does that mean to teacher pay when we're trying to recruit teachers and teachers don't want to work in any school right now because the politics around the classroom? What, what does it mean to, you know, keeping the lights on in schools? We found one superintendent who would talk to us about this. Uh, it's Dr. Justin Terry. He's a superintendent at Forney ISD. Forney ISD, of course, is just uh, east of uh, Dallas on uh, Interstate 30. And 
it's a growing district. It's 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 bursting at the seams over there. And the question was simple for him. I mean, he he took the call, and the question was simple: Are you nervous when you have a lot of these little old ladies and little old men who don't have to pay those school taxes anymore? Dr. Terry, thanks so much for taking the time with us. Uh, it looks like you're coming to us from your office there at Forney ISD. Yes, yes, satellite office here in Forney ISD. That's right. Yes, how many sir. how many students and and teachers do y'all have now there in Forney? I've been growing. We are growing fast. We sure are. We're over seventeen thousand kids, and uh, you know we're one of the fastest growing in in the in the state, and continue to be um, with about probably twelve hundred uh, teachers, twenty five hundred staff. Well, which makes you the perfect person to talk to for this, because growing, of course, you know, you, you got to have money to grow, you know, especially when you, you know, have that many students coming in and so forth. And I'm just curious, you know, things are really changing for school districts here in Texas because of this property tax relief uh, that was passed by the legislature earlier this year uh, and then subsequently passed by voters uh, in the constitutional uh, amendment that they passed uh, by an overwhelming majority. A lot of people are happy about this. I'm just curious, curious what a school superintendent uh, thinks about some of these changes, uh, just because it seems like it takes your ability to control your uh, incoming money uh, and it sort of farms that out now to the state. Well, and, and you know, it's a good question. And, and to be honest with you, we've we've haven't really had a lot of control over um, the maintenance and operation side of our tax rate for a long time now. Um, so, you know, two different sides to that, uh, you know, we're equalized uh, basically uh, on how we operate our schools and we, we're funded um, uh, per pupil. Uh, we get right currently uh, $6,160 for every student, uh, which is not enough, I will tell you. Hopefully uh, we get some continued relief um, in this session. Uh, but um, it, it, the tax rate really on the maintenance and operations side is set already and, and we're equalized really when it comes down to how we operate, no matter uh, whether we have that $100,000 exemption or not. There's some exceptions to that really on the, on the INS side, um, um, which is how really our mortgage payment, how we pay the bills, uh, which we can get into as well if you'd like to. Yeah, it gets in the weeds when you get into school finance. So there's INS and there's M and O. People hear this and it glosses over to a lot of folks. M and O is is keeping the lights on every day, right? The maintenance and operation. Yes, sir, and, and it pays the salaries. You know, eighty percent of our budget is going to be people. We're in the people business, and so right. it pays salaries. It keeps the lights on. Uh, it, it it buys the bus drivers, right? Uh, so that's what we pay for on the M and O side. So you have this senior citizen we just talked to here, and, and she's saying that, listen, um, my taxes now are going to go to zero, which is great for her. But at some point, if her taxes go to zero and if others like her go to zero, y'all are going to have to start feeling this at some point with the loss of that tax base. And, and the state says, hey, we, we can make it up for now. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you concerned that, that there might be a, a gap there at some point? Well, I mean, there, there is the potential. Uh, I think the more we compress the tax rate, uh, although it is great to, to kind of help balance out some of these rising uh, appraised values, um, at the same time, uh, we become more dependent um, on the economy itself. And uh, because the gap that's being filled in uh, is coming from other, you know, taxing revenue or, or other revenue sources from the state, as you're referencing. So, um, you know, it's it, it's a little bit concerning uh, for us down the road, uh, but as long as Texas continues to be in, uh, you know, the economic engine that we've been, uh, you know, that's great. But when there's a lull, uh, if we do hit a heavy recession or or something even worse in the future, heaven forbid, uh, that could definitely impact us if the if the compression rate continues to go down and 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 appraised values continue to be exempted. Yeah, I, that, that's one thing that really occurred to me is that the state said, hey, you know, we're going to make up for all of these, you know, regular everyday homeowners who are getting an extra break in their school taxes. Uh, and we're going to make up for all of these homeowners who are over 65 or disabled who get a total break now on their school taxes in, in, in many cases and go all the way down to zero. That starts to become quite a bit of money that we're talking about. And I think we are all old enough here to remember uh, years that were leaner uh, when the state didn't have a surplus. And in fact, they were calling on, uh, you know, different agencies to cut their budgets by 5% or 10%. Do you worry as a superintendent about those leaner years? And do you talk with other superintendents about this? 
Well, you know, I think we continually talk about how to fund um, public education because currently we're underfunded. Um, and so we're, we're hanging on. Uh, most districts uh, are continuing to, to, to do their best to balance a budget when, um, you know, there's, there's we're, we're really, what are we, about 43rd across the nation right now when it comes to funding. Uh, so any hiccup there in the system could cause uh, some challenges. I think you're probably referencing 2011, which uh, I don't think any educator around at that point in time would 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 ever forget. It was tough um, because when you cut, you don't cut, uh, you know, just art supplies. You cut people. Uh, that's 80 percent of the business and that, that we're in, like I said earlier. Uh, you know, I think the other thing, as I alluded to that um, earlier, we have to take into consideration is the other side of the tax rate. Uh, and that is the the um, interest and sinking fund and or uh, tax rate, and that's that's really what pays the bills from the mortgage end of things. Um, th that is not equalized, and so as districts begin to go out and build, uh, you know, seek bond referendums to build new facilities, as we continue to grow across our state, uh, you know, there's some hold harmless for those who have already been authorized or previous bonds, but in the future, uh, we're not going to receive as much revenue. Uh, when tax rates continue to be exempted, that, that revenue is lost. Um, and so it could delay the build of a building or, uh, you know, uh, you know, just the overall how we're going to structure our payment plan in the future. So that I think that's also something to talk about and consider as, as, as the, the com rates continue to be compressed and, and values can be, continue to be exempted. Dr. Terry, none of us like paying property taxes. You pay it, I pay it, Wheeler yeah. pays it. Um, but what needs to happen here? How do you sort this thing out? Because Texas is 43rd in student funding. Uh, we're seventh highest in the nation in property taxes. Texas can do better than this. A lot of smart people in the state. What's the answer? Well, I mean, we need to fund public education. Uh, and, you know, I mean, there was what, a 30 to $40 billion surplus this year. We're 66% of the overall uh, budget for the state of Texas. And right now we're you know, we've got a, a budget, if they'll ever give it to us, of about four and a half billion of that. Uh, that's a challenge. Uh, we need to keep up with um, uh, other states. We are we are a, um, you know, the economic engine right now, partially of the nation. And and to continue that uh, with the with the uh, population that we've got, the majority of our population is 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 underage kids or, or um, uh, you know, younger kids. And, and in order to, to drive that workforce, we have to have a successful public education system to ensure their quality. Dr. Terry, my last question kind of on that topic, the $6,160 you're talking about, it's, it's officially called the basic allotment, but the bottom yes, line is for, for everybody else, that's how much school districts get per student. So if you have, you know, 10 students, 10 times uh, 6160, um, Texas is 43rd with that number. But when you see the proposal that Governor Abbott and, and, and other Republican leaders have where they want to give parents who send their kids to private school $10,400 per year per student, and then you look at what public schools get, 6160, that, that's a heck of a difference there. What was your reaction when you saw that number? Well, I do think there's a little misconception there, uh, again, um, because that $10,400 is really uh, I believe calculated at 75% of what's called the weighted allotment. Uh, this is the weeds, right? We're, 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 we're in the weeds, the weeds right here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's a little bit uh, lower than what overall we would receive if the state average uh, from a weighted allotment standpoint. Uh, you know, the biggest challenge that, that we see right now with what's on the table with HB1 or, or SB1 uh, is that there's no cap and, and talk about a, a, a physical uh, constraint uh, for the state of Texas down the road. Uh, you know, we're looking at over the next, you know, a couple of years, two billion dollars at a, at a minimum. Um, so until there's some sort of cap to where, I mean, it's just not physically responsible. Whether it's ten thousand four hundred dollars or eight thousand dollars or sixty one sixty, until there's some control over how many students, how many uh, people would actually be able to participate in some sort of ESA or voucher program it's not physically responsible for the state of Texas, much less good for public education and our kids. But you and everyone else uh, who does what you do for a living, you're watching really closely this whole debate over the basic allotment right now in this special session, because, you know, if we think about what inflation has done uh, just to our own personal budgets uh, in the past, let's say three years, four years, 
uh, it's it's been enormous. You all are still working with the same amount of money per child that you were dealing with three years ago uh, before inflation just ran through the roof. You know, average inflation right now across uh, the nation, I believe, over the last uh, four or five years since 2019 uh, was about 17 and a half percent. Uh, you know, we're still, as you, as you alluded to, we're still dealing with the exact same uh, basic allotment, which was 6160 uh, since 2019. Uh, it's, it's pretty challenging to keep up with a competitive teacher market right now, uh, bus driver market, custodial market, uh, you name it. Um, when we're having to give increased raises without additional re revenue really coming in. So it, it, is a, it is a real challenge right now. And they, I, I believe the number needs to get up to around 73 to 7,500 to, to, to meet um, some of those uh, inflationary uh, needs that we've, or inflationary rise that we've seen over the last four or five years, just to keep up. Hmm. Any, any message less, for Austin? 43, how about that? Say, say again? I said much less move us up in the rankings above 43. That's just to sustain. Hmm. Yeah. A any message for, for lawmakers in Austin right now? You know, uh, I will say, I know they're down there and they're tired of being there. And, um, you know, I would say this, that uh, continue to fight the good fight for our kids, for our teachers, for your community. Uh, you know, when we're dealing with a situation like a voucher program, uh, you know, it, it, we get into all of these philosophical discussions, but ultimately what it comes down to is the more uh, we pull out of a, a public education system, the more you are dividing your community. Uh, and that's a challenge. Uh, we are already becoming divided as a nation. Uh, the public education system and the church have always been what keeps in, uh, a, a community together and the, and the glue that sticks a community together. And, uh, you know, when we continue to privatize and, and move into charter education systems, uh, Friday night football games don't look the same anymore. Uh, so I would challenge our, our lawmakers to keep that in mind, uh, keep our kids in mind, do the right thing for our kids and our communities. Well, there sure have been some uh, sweeping changes already uh, for schools uh, in this uh, legislative year. Uh, we shall see uh, what happens in these special sessions uh, because, it, you know, more change could be on the way here. Uh, Dr. Justin Terry, Forney ISD Superintendent, thanks so much for taking the time with us. Thanks for having me. Great to talk to you guys again. All right, Wheeler, we talked a lot of math, and I, I'll tell you, I, I wasn't the best math guy. Um, <laughs> the I, I same. You, I know you weren't either, clearly, or you wouldn't be doing this with me here. But, <laughs> Did you take calculus? No, dude. Come on. What, what was your, what was the highest thing that you got to? Uh, like uh, remedial math or arithmetic two? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what did I do? I, I think uh, what, I did something after algebra, algebra, geometry. What do you, what all do you do in high school? I, yeah, I, algebra, geometry, that sort of thing. Um, There's one more I thought above it. I didn't do like, huh. I, I didn't do calculus or any of that. If I'll I did, I blocked it out. I'll tell you this as a student at the University of Houston, you know, you had to get a couple of, you know, math credits, whatever, to, to be able to graduate right. with a, you know, radio, television, communications degree. Um, I, took one math. I still have a nightmare to this day um, that I am about to graduate and I figured out that I'm one math credit short. It's it's a recurring nightmare that I've had for years and years. And it's because I that kind of almost, it didn't almost happen, but I was in my final year and I had to take a math class and I had to drop the math class because it was just, it, it was too much. And so, you know, I get down to like final semester now, you know, you got to get this math class in. I took math statistics, like actual math statistics, and I was taking communications statistics at the same time. OK, you would think, well, you know, that's going to dovetail together. And there were similarities, a lot of similarities, just enough to make you really confuse which formula went for which class. I that's the hardest class I've ever taken in my life. What was your grade? I aced. I, I OK, 70. I, well, I was I, I fell into failing territory for a little while uh, and then uh, I got to the final and I aced that final like I woke up and just knew how to do it all of a sudden it was the weirdest thing and I aced that final and I ended that class with a B. Math was easier in the 70s, though, when, when you were taking this. So I, I understand that they didn't have the same things they have now. But 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 do you know anyone who or have you ever calculated your your taxes? I have never sat, and I, I, that's that's one of the things with Pat Hill. I was like, I agreed with you. Like, you got a zero dollar school tax bill. I would look around and make sure no one saw me open that envelope and just tuck it away somewhere and be like, mm -hmm. okay, 
I would never, I don't think I would ever go back and, and try to do the numbers to right. figure out how they got there, you know? So the, the thing to watch, 100%, man, the thing to watch, I, I think, is is whether this changes in the coming years. And yeah. and based on what you heard from Miss Hill and, and the original communication she had with us, I know she's going to keep us updated on what happens with this. Yeah, and 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 it is something for all of us to watch, I, I, I do think, because, you know, again, uh, a lot of us have been around long enough to see this state not rolling in money like it is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, what happens if oil and gas, you know, what, what happens if the price of oil drops to, you know, $40 a barrel or something for an extended period of time? This state would be hurting in big ways. Or what happens if you get a recession and you don't get those same sales tax revenues anymore? Then what happens? You know, you've, you've let all of these homeowners off the hook with their school taxes and not even just over 65 and disabled. You've let like just regular everyday homeowners, even Jason Whiteley, who can totally afford to pay whatever you bill him, you've given him a huge break. So, you know, can you keep affording that for sure? You, you should tell the listeners too, that I do live in your back house out there uh, <laughs> by your swimming pool. So, and you're yeah, doing I, a tremendous job cleaning that pool. I can afford it because you charge such a little rent. That's why I can afford that. So, <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for making this one happen because I, you know, like I said, I forwarded the email on since you're our uh, math whiz here. I'm here to clean up. I'm just here to clean up your messes. And you do a pretty good job, man. So uh, yeah, keep it up. You do a pretty good job making them. Ha <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to you, man. I'm thankful for you. You know that, Wheeler? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's interesting I, to hear yeah, that. I, 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 we I, should have. You buried the lead. We should have heard mm. that in the very beginning. Mm. I don't think I've ever heard you say Nobody's that. Nobody's listening at this point in the podcast. Uh, so that's why I, am, I drop it at the end. Yeah, I know. I'm thankful for you too, really. And and for everybody who listens, by the way. Uh, uh, good segue. Numbers, huh? No, no. The numbers good have segue, been good. And, and maybe we have something to talk about with those numbers as well soon. So thank you as always for downloading. And uh, tell your friends and family about it too. Especially as you're around the the, the Thanksgiving table there. You know, tell them, y'all ticks. Y'all aren't listening. You know, get on and, there. And if someone brings up politics, not yolitics, but politics, don't become enraged like Wheeler oh. does there. Just tell them to download yolitics <laughs> and we'll break it down for you. Thanks for listening, guys.